Hello everybody, it is Lily, and today I just wanted to um, go through some of my old art, and um, some of the stuff is from college, and we can go ahead and take a look at some of the old stuff I did, and yeah, um, I'm my allergies are pretty bad right now, just, just letting you know, so if my voice sounds a little na more nasally than usual, uh, that's why. Anyway, okay, cool, so let's get started. I think there's a lot of my old art from community college in here, so that's gonna be kind of interesting to, to look at, some old stuff. This, you might recognize, this was um, the piece I did with my soap bubble art video, and I'm pleasantly surprised that the soap hasn't done anything weird to the the paper since I made this a couple months ago. Um, yeah, it's still holding up pretty nicely. Uh, here's just some paper that I haven't done anything with. This is a, a cool, like, how to paint flowers and, oh, here's how to paint flowers. Okay. This one's a, like, how to paint butterflies instructional book that I got at, at, uh, Powell's. And, uh, yeah, I, I cut it up a little bit because I was doing some collage. Um, but yeah, if you want to see me do some butterfly or flower paintings, um, maybe using this book as an instruction, um, that'd be cool. Let me know if you're interested in that. Yeah, it's just a bunch of my YouTube art. These are my bugs from my white paper versus black paper drawing video. Here's the neon sea turtle from my making water-based paints video. Here is a print I did of a bunny. And this was in my printmaking class in community college. Here's another one of my prints I did. There should be a few of them. That's the thing with printmaking is you make multiples and that could be an interesting um, video if I do some printmaking. I wonder if you guys would be interested in that. So this was, oh, this is dry point and you take a piece of acrylic, um, little scratchy tool, and you scratch into the surface, you rub some ink into it, and you print it, send it through a printing press. Then on top here, I put watercolor. Um, I like this process, it's really nice. Maybe I should try that out again sometime. I also have some, some prints from my classmates because we traded um, prints back then. This is a sea slug. It's a monotype I did. And this is um, kind of similar to the dry point, except on the plexiglass, you paint directly with the ink and then you just send it through the printing press. So you only get one print per monotype. That's why it's called monotype, mono meaning one. Uh, this looks like a cookie. It was supposed to be the moon, though. Made a couple of them. This is an octopus. Uh, here is a a few failed Callisto prints, and another uh, Peter Rabbit print. Some of these were really cool. Not really gonna show them too much just because, you know, they're not mine. And so I'd have to get permission to show those. Cool. This is also monotype. So I did, I laid the ink down onto the plexiglass and sent it through. And this one I am super, super into. I took a photograph of this and I'm trying to digitize it and clean it up because I Still, I still want to get this tattooed. I've been wanting to get it tattooed on my arm since like 2015. Just tattoos are time and money, man. But um, yeah, I want to get it right here. I think that'd be a good place for this moth. Upside down. Like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like it. I think that uh, ink blot kind of looking tattoos are sick. So yeah. Um, some more Peter Rabbit ones. These ones are a little darker. They turned out better. Yeah, maybe I should do like a, I don't know. I should probably put these in, in a store or something, try to sell my stuff. Some carbon paper, good old carbon paper and tracing paper. Um, oh, these are interesting. So in my, okay. When I transferred schools because I went to community college and then I transferred to a four year. Some of my credits didn't go through. And so I signed up for a drawing two class again. So I took a second one. 
anyway, in that, in that class, we were supposed to try different techniques to try to, uh, different drawing techniques to get effects or something. I don't know. Anyway, I took water-based markers, like Crayola markers, and I scribbled on this piece of paper, and then I used a spray bottle to get it all wet. And this is the effect I got. It's kind of interesting, but yeah, just messing around. Um, this is, I am blanking on this technique right now, um, but it's where you lay the paper on a textured surface and you use a crayon or some kind of drawing um, tool to pick up on the, the texture of the surface. So this was the board that we would pin our um, work to for critique. Here's some um, outlets and I used a purple crayon to do that and then I used some just good old fashioned Crayola water-based markers on top of that. Here is something else. Uh, I think it's charcoal. I'm not sure. Yeah. And mark making markers and stuff. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, some abstract. Ooh, this is really shiny in this environment. That's the thing about uh, graphite that I'm not crazy about is it gets so shiny. Anyway, graphite. Uh, I don't know. I feel like that's a common theme. This is interesting. <laughs> um, I remember doing this. I drew some different facial features of different people and I kind of mish, mish, mishmashed them together. I like the way I drew this eyeball. I, I should do more like caricatures of people. I think that could be fun. Oh, this is, so this is a jellyfish. I wonder if I could charge this up and then, yeah, let's give that a try actually. This is glow in the dark paint and I was going to make a whole bunch of stickers like this and then um, put it in an inflatable dome. This was for a, a class called making a meaning and I made this inflatable dome, right, out of like trash bag type material and you inflate it using a box fan. I still have it. It is in my closet. It's it's really weird. Maybe I should show you guys sometime. It's strange. It's like definitely like conceptual art. Um, but I was going to make a whole bunch of these and like put them on the inside so like you'd enter this like inflatable dome that's like totally dark and see all these like glowing jellyfish around you. It was going to be pretty sweet but then I just... That class... I felt very lost at the time, so I didn't I didn't know what I should do, and so I didn't end up doing the project. But here is my prototype jellyfish, and I'm going to charge it up, and then we're gonna see it glow. Yeah, there is the glowing jellyfish. Um, certainly it's pretty. Uh, it's rough. I mean, it's a jellyfish shape, right? Painting on this contact paper surface is pretty difficult. Um, it was, it kind of wanted to smear around rather than actually like stick to the surface. But yeah, I should, I should go back to this idea and try to figure something out. I like, I like the concept. It's interesting. Here is some art from way back in the day, 2014, 2015. Uh, community college days. <sighs> this was my 2D design class and this was um, a project on value. Yeah. So this was texture, um, implied texture versus actual texture. You're supposed to make the same thing but using, you know, actually textured things and implied texture. Uh, yeah. Uh, this one's bleh. <laughs> Don't think it's as strong as some of the other stuff I did. Whatever. Uh, ooh, I like these. I like these a lot, actually. These are fun. This is focusing on rectilinear lines, which are sharp edges, like, you know, squares and rectangles, things like that. And this is curvilinear lines. So like circles and curves, things like that. Um, but the purpose of this exercise was to use a combination of both but having one primarily rectilinear and one primarily curvilinear. Yeah, these are really fun. I like doing this. I should do more of this. And these are um, about shape. Yeah, curvilinear, curvilinear shape, rectilinear shape. 
This one was line quality and we were given a symbol and we were supposed to write the symbol uh, using different line quality and I used a stick to do this. Yeah. Uh, oh, here is the sketch of this one, which I did in my uh, colored pencil video all about colored pencils. Check that out if you, yeah, check, check that out if you'd uh, like to know how to color with colored pencils. This was still my 2D design class and this was um, like content you're supposed to make. Oh no, it was, uh, this was com composition. This is the composition assignment. And this is radial composition, meaning it um, has a, the center focus here and it progresses outward in a, a radial manner. And then this is, uh, like, I think it was like, it's called like a grid composition. And we were supposed to make two pieces that, um, could be combined into a new composition using both. So I cut out the corners and, and if, if I rearrange it, they're combined into one, one piece, I suppose. Um, still not like 100% that it was uh, successful, but this is about social anxiety. And um, I think I named it Mum's Word something. This is the shortest poem in the world, by the way. I don't know. I feel like social anxiety is a very relatable thing, especially for teenagers. Like I was never like a socially anxious person until like 10th grade, ninth grade, 10th grade, you know, beginning of high school. And then it really kind of kicked in so far, you know, I've gotten over it. YouTube helps a lot actually. Um, but yeah, I like the colors I chose. And the last thing, the last thing in this box and this is for the same class and this one was color. I remember in that class, we were supposed to use, you know, the primary colors, uh, yellow, red, and blue. And we could only use those three colors to create the um, secondary colors, purple, orange, and green. And um, just give that a try sometime. If you get the wrong, red, um, red, yellow, and blue, or if you get cheap ones, it is incredibly difficult to get a satisfying purple and a satisfying green. Like this is probably the best I could do with the colors I had. And that's kind of, the, I mean, it's not a bad purple, but it's not a, it's not quote unquote, a pretty purple. That's not a very satisfying green. Um, and cheaper paints, don't mix as well as nicer quality paints. Maybe I should do a video about that, about acrylic paints and cheap paints versus nice paints. I think that could be fun. If you're interested in that, leave me a comment. Um, anyway, thanks for looking at some of my old art that I have in this container. Um, I, ha I keep on a hold of, like, I literally hold on to all my art and I don't know what I'll do with this stuff. I'll probably end up going through it and like seriously trashing a bunch of it. But right now it's living underneath my bed. So that's fun. Thanks for watching my video. And I am currently working on a wood burning video. And that's going interestingly. I don't know if the wood I chose is appropriate. I think it might have like some kind of finish on it. So I'm probably like inhaling a whole bunch of chemicals, which is bad. Probably shouldn't do that. But yeah, it's really smelly. I mean, at first you're like, oh, what's wood burning smell? That smells great. And then you're like, oh, this actually is kind of obnoxious. And now my room smells like bad <laughs> for hours. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that is happening. It's going to be a slow process. Wood burning is honestly a very slow process. Anyway, um, thanks for watching my video and I hope you have a great week and I will see you in my next video. Bye.